Hey everybody, Marcos Villegas here being joined with Keith Thurman who fights Sean Porter this Saturday on CBS, man. It's uh, been a year since uh, we've seen you back in the ring. That year up to this point for you, how's it been physically, emotionally coming into this fight? Well, for the most of last year after the fight, you know, I, I talked to my manager. I asked him, you know, What's, what does it look like? He said, well, we're looking into next year. I said, okay, so I get to enjoy the holidays. And he said, yeah. So I, I knew, you know, I relaxed and I spent time with family. I just enjoyed myself. And then I got back into the uh, mix of things um, early this year and just waited and waited to, to see what was going to happen. The, the, the f fight got announced and, and then, you know, the fight got postponed. And here it is now, you know. So, you know, it's... It's the life of a fighter. It's the life of an athlete. You know, um, it's nothing new. You know, I stay positive throughout everything, the ups and the downs, um, the slight procrastination. You know, none of it has really bothered me. This is a beautiful platform. I can ask for nothing greater at this time. So instead of thinking about what could have happened before, just being blessed that this is what's happening now. There's no better time in life than now. No matter what's going on in life, now is the moment in life. And, um, you know, this fight, I believe, is evidence of that. Saturday night is going to be more evidence of that. When we start throwing punches, you'll see that, you know, you're going to want to be tuned in, man. It's going to be a great fight. Um, I'm looking forward to um, putting on a great performance and looking forward to having a great challenge with the challenger, Sean Porter. Did you ever feel at any point up to, I guess, today or coming into Saturday that this fight wouldn't happen given the setbacks? So you were no. always confident it would. No. I mean, there was, there was a small, small um, questioning, but, all you know, I uh, um, talked to Al Heyman, and Al Heyman, you know, reassured me that it's going to be Porter. Porter's not going nowhere. They want you. They want the opportunity to grab the WBA world title. They would not have been able to fight anybody and have a title shot opportunity. So for them, it was it was uh, worth waiting. And I, I came to understand that. And so that just, you know, made me feel comfortable because I could do what I needed to do to recover and then make this fight happen. And that's exactly what we did. Looking back at your record, uh, I want to say like the last like highlight KO you had was maybe uh, uh, three fights ago, something like that, right? It's, it's been like a year. I know it's the last fight was yeah, it's the, been a the while. ref stopped it, but an, an actual knockout. Uh, given it that, has. is it a burden or is there extra pressure to want to get a, a knockout like that? Does it bother you that you haven't had a knockout like that in, in a long time? It is. There is a burning desire yeah. within myself to have a, a KO victory form of a knockout you know Luis Colazzo uh, quit on the stool um, Guerrero was knocked down Bundu was knocked down um, and um, even Julio Diaz uh, uh, quit and didn't come out you know so it's it's hard to make world-class fighters quit and I actually do pride myself for um, doing having several people quit on the stools or giving up in fights especially Latin fighters who are known for having so much pride in the ring but, you know, the fans ultimately want to see that knockout victory. Um, I, I, I enjoy getting the knockouts myself. It was exciting when I knocked down Robert Guerrero. It's always exciting when a knockdown occurs within a match. You know, you can hear the excitement in the arena. I'm always itching to to create that kind of explosiveness and that excitement in, in any arena, in any fight. Even when I was starting out and there was only, you know, uh, 25 to 50 people in attendance before everybody else shows up. You know, I'm always um, trying to put on a great show and a great performance. And, you know, I want to make a terrific statement and a big statement. And I want to show the world who Keith Thurman truly is Saturday night. I want to live up to the name one time, all the time, KOs for life. You and Sean have a long history with each other. I know you guys are friends. Given this fight, has it strained the friendship at all? Is it a thing where you guys can fight and then you'll be friends again? Or is it kind of strained because of this fight and, and all the talk that's been going on with his dad uh, coming at your side? I don't really think so. You know, um, we still have a lot of respect for each other. There is a little bit of, of a brick wall. You know, it's there's a few bricks in place. You know, we're obviously not as friendly as we would be if we were just coming out to a fight yeah. and seeing each other, you know. Um, 
But that's because this week is business. Both of our careers are on the line. Both of us have goals that we want to accomplish. And, you know, if you have to go through somebody that you respect to do that, then so be it. This is the fight game. We both signed up for this. You know, we both knew that this could happen years ago. And part of me is happy that it is happening. You know, I look forward to great competition, you know, and Sean Porter is a great athlete. I'm looking for, forward to the challenge and I'm looking forward to overcoming it. Now, uh, an interview that Sean did, uh, I want to say maybe two, three weeks ago, he, he mentioned that he feels that you're vulnerable to the body. He's not really convinced uh, about your chin. When he brings that up or fans bring that up, what's your natural response to that? Well, two things. One, anybody gets hit on the chin hard enough, they fall. they're going to they're gonna fall. So I love when people are like, you know, oh, Amir Khan has a glass chin. Amir Khan has a glass chin if a non-puncher knocks him down. But if a puncher knocks you down, somebody who has a good punch or somebody who at least sat down on that punch and threw a terrific punch, you know what I mean? It wasn't his glass chin that got knocked out by you know canelo, canelo. Yeah, and, and i don't think anybody would have gotten knocked out of that with that punch exactly <laughs> and you know have i been hit have i been rocked have i been hurt yes i'm human i stated it many times you know um everybody that's you know that's why i bring my one-time power to everybody and i intend on hurting everybody that i fight you know for him not to study for him not to see something some vulnerability you know you know they're not doing their job that's how they're supposed to prepare um we know that the body shot against Colazzo has heightened a lot of people thinking that the body is how you should attack Keith Thurman you know um his punch was a beautifully placed punch it was the only punch he landed like that in the whole fight he did not get to reland a punch like that um I've never been hit professionally with a body shot like that. That was the first time in my career. Um, it, it was something that I endured. I showed my true strengths as a champion, my willingness to uh, survive and then come back and continuously win the fight. So I look forward to, like I said, the challenge. I know that they have a game plan. I know they trained hard and that they plan on executing that game plan. But it's my job to show them that what they think that they're going to be able to do is not as easy to do. On a final note, uh, last question here, Keith. Reading the interviews, reading the stories, uh, seeing the interviews, you seem very confident that this fight's going to end in a knockout. Why is it that you see a knockout happening with a guy like Sean Porter? Where, where is this coming from? Two things. I want the knockout. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'll admit, I actually wanted a first round knockout against Bundu. I prayed for it before the fight. You almost got it. <laughs> I, I say I got it. Yeah. My prayers were answered. I set it up. He went down. And as I went to that neutral corner, I said, man, God, you truly are always on my side and, listen, and truly listening. I said, now that you showed me that, you know, you, you're, you're here, I'm grateful, but I'll be satisfied with putting on a little bit more of a performance. You know, that, that, that closing out the show in the first round, I was like, nah, I, I changed my mind in that moment. And I was like, if it was as easy to drop him in round one, then I should get him by round four or five. Once when I realized he changed up his strategy, he was more... Uh, timid and made some adjustments he didn't want to come in the way that he did in the first round then I was in a predicament and I I decided well by round five with the knockdown you got six rounds in the bag this match is pretty much won so let's just continue to put on this boxing performance and win I was content with boxing now I, I'm a boxer puncher there might be moments where I might seem content on boxing in this match I, I can't really predict that but Ultimately, I'm really going to be looking for the KO victory. I have the desire to, I mean, to just get that knockout, man. It's, it's, it's been a while. I know, I'm, I know what I'm capable of doing, and I just want to remind people that my name is one time for a reason, not a short season. Keith, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. This Saturday, this man right here defending his title against Sean Porter on CBS.